All right. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone, virtually also. Um, so Matt and, and I are here to talk about Flow, our industry cloud for media and entertainment uh, that's built on the Autodesk platform services. Um, Flow will bring customers capabilities and efficiencies by connecting our current products and future products, but also serving as a hub for an active ecosystem of products that are actually outside of Autodesk. So Matt, every time we talk about new things, I've been in the industry for a very long time. Then there's confusion about current products with the new thing. Yeah. And so I think what we're also going to do is maybe debunk some of those rumors that are online, because you know our rumor uh, mill in m and &E is like pretty big. And that so I think I'm, we're going to yeah. do a bit of that too, and not just talk about, and, and just try to figure out how it all connects together. Okay. So I think the, the first thing is, you know, um, you know what, what is flow, really? We get this question a lot, don't yes, we? Yes, yeah. we do. Every <laughs> single customer that we you talk know, to. When we talk about flow, I like to start by talking about the customer problem that we're trying to solve. Um, because flow is really an umbrella term for a lot of things. And when you think about what it takes to make a film or a game, it's this massive collaboration project, right? It's potentially thousands of people who have to collaborate over years a lot of times. Uh, and a lot of times you have to collaborate with people who aren't even working on, on the project anymore. And so if I'm an animator, I need access to some thoughts that the customer had at the time. There needs to be a way to do that. And the way that they collaborate uh, over that time and space is, is through data. And the ability to do that has been sort of left up as an exercise to our customers. And this is where we think Flow can really help by becoming that hub, the place for the industry to collaborate, to organize that data and to manage it, and importantly, to make it available to artists and customers, no matter what tool they're trying to use, um, wherever they are. Yeah, so one of the things we always hear when we talk to customers is, is Flow going to be an island, right? Yep. Well, no, I mean, we, we hear that a lot, and I, I very much understand why um, this is the lifeblood of their, of their business, and so customers are very concerned about the data. Um, we've always, from the very beginning, said, no, this flow has to be open, it has to be collaborative. I think even though we went into it with that mindset, every time we talk to customers, we get more and more further down that path, and so the ability for us to make flow work with the way that customers are working today and to evolve it into the future where they control their data is, uh, is definitely very important. Yeah. And you know, one of the one of the things it's funny because uh, Amy was talking about renaming, and so I get a lot of heat. I got a lot of heat on the renaming of Shockred to Flow Production Tracking. So that's one of the things that I'm going to debunk. Yeah. Uh, so yes, that was me. You can all blame me because I did that, uh, and I'll take full responsibility. But here's why, and I think it's so important for people to understand why I did that. Um, you know, every time I would go to a customer and you talk, everything you just kind of said about Flow, like Shockrid, right, was very similar to what you describe. And so the first thing customer would say, and by the way, Shockrid was an amazing tool, like people use it all the time. And the first thing they would say is, oh, so that means you're getting rid of Shockrid. And so I made a decision to um, rename, you know, to Flow Production Tracking so that people understood that it was a it was part of the strategy and it wasn't something that was going away. And so I would rather have a customer ask me what's going on with flow and flow production tracking than have a conversation with a customer about something that we were killing when we were really never going to kill it. And so I have to say, it actually worked yep. because I went out to visit customers in London uh, a, a couple of months ago and I have not heard that once ever again, uh, though I do get the joke around renaming, but I, I would rather that. And I think, you know, so talk a little bit about how, you know, flow production tracking is a, an important part of the, of the flow. Story. Yeah, I, I think, you know, when we first started talking about flow, I think a lot of customers thought like, oh, we think flow is just going to replace everything that they're using. First of all, we could never actually replace everything that customers are using. And so flow really has to tie together the different <coughs> pieces of the pipeline and make the data available. And flow production tracking is the source of truth for that data for, for that availability. So, and I do think as soon as we made that name change, yeah. customers started asking, so how does this work with flow as opposed to, uh, you know, is, is it, it going is it gonna replace it? Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, and speaking of things that we've renamed, um, I think people were a little bit surprised when we started down this flow journey when you acquired um, Moxion and Pix and we renamed them, you know, Flow yeah. Capture, because it's very different than a lot of the stuff that we normally do. So, yeah. 
Can yeah. you talk a little bit about why you decided to acquire yeah. them and what sort of that means for Flow? I mean, I think when we talk about Flow, it's end to end. And I think that's extremely important uh, for people to understand. And so we have traditionally been in post-production. Um, and you know, what happens in post-production is you just get all the, I don't, know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, you get all the crap sometimes, right? Like you have to literally, like everybody would say, it was like even a, a commercial, like fix it in post, fix it in post. Well, guess what? People are tired of fixing things in post because it's so inefficient. And so by connecting production with post, I think that, that is the, the number one efficiency gain that every single customer would like. So when you look at uh, products like Flow Capture, um, which are these acquisitions that we did, basically it's all about the camera data. And that is the key, is that camera data, when you're on set, you film, you get the camera data. So imagine if it's instantly somebody in post gets that data, also gets all the instructions about what the director wants to do with that data, and they could just start getting to work. And so in order for us to create this end-to-end, -end, it was really important for us to actually buy uh, and expand, actually, in this particular area, because we had all, a, a, a strength in post, but we needed one in, in production. And with products like, especially like PIX, which is a, a, a product that is widely used by most of our customers, and now, you know, combining that with um, Moxion and becoming Flow Capture, I think, you know, will bring so much value to customers. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, Matt, how do our desktops play into the Flow strategy? We get this question a lot, too, because I think as soon as you say the word platform, for some reason, web browsers pop into people's minds, and they think that desktop products are going to go away. Um, and it's true that we want to organize and manage data in the cloud, but the reason why we want to do that is to make it available wherever customers are doing their work. And for very good reasons, a lot of customer work is happening on desktop products. And so the desktop products are not going away. And in fact, what we want to do is connect those desktop products to flow so that we can bring additional yeah. value, like we launched Animate in Context last year. Um, and really, if you think about it, the way I like to think about these things is if you think about a desktop product as sort of, well, for anybody who <laughs> is old enough to remember this, um, you know, computers before the internet, right? Like, you could do some things with a computer, but you kind of reach the end of it. But then once you connected to the internet, it was infinite. You got like real data, real time. Um, and so that's what we should be doing with our desktop products is you connect them, and all of a sudden, they're live connected to the rest of the work yeah. that's going on. Do you want to explain animating in context and how that connects? Yeah, so animating. The connected workflows that we're doing in yep. Flow? So animate in context is if you're, if you're an animator and you're working in Maya, traditionally, you've got your shot, and everything that you see is about that one shot. And there's a lot of stuff that you have to do that is about sort of relating that shot to the, the surrounding shots, making sure that you're getting continuity, making sure that eye lines match up and things like that. And so historically, you would have to go out to other tools to sort of look and get those different shots, the surrounding shots, and make sure that uh, everything lines up. And so what we do now is we bring in the editorial data from flow production tracking, and we can bring the surrounding shots in that context right there into Maya. So it's like right there where you work. Yeah. OK, I need to debunk one of the ones that has been Probably like it's, I swear I've been in 25 years in the industry. 3DS Max is not going away. <laughs> okay, it's not going away. I, I can't tell you how many times that keeps coming up, uh, especially online. Uh, it is a product that, you know, has a, a, a loyal customer base. Um, you know, lots of people use it. We absolutely need that in our portfolio. And for some reason, I can't squash this rumor. So you heard it here, it's not going away. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, Matt, how does AI now impact the strategy? Because obviously, with the rise of AI. Yeah. I mean, I think it's our responsibility to sort of navigate the AI environment and help bring that to our customers and, and workflows that actually works for them. And I think there's sort of three main categories that we have to do that with. The first is with the current products and the way that customers are working today. So you see that with things like Rachel just talked about the ML Deformer. We talked about Motion Maker. And you'll see these uh, features in the products that will just make your, make your life easier and take away some of, some of the tedium. The second is in the way we think about AI as it relates to flow. And if you think about AI, it's all about data. So AI is not magic. It actually has to have, you know, 
data and structured data to work. And so the more that we can do that, the more value that we can provide. And the fact that that data is connected will actually enable AI to do more. Because as I said, AI is not magic. It needs sort of like this understanding of the data and how it relates to each other to do that. And then the third is really inventing new ways of working. And this is where you start to see things like Flow Studio come in. Um, and honestly, nobody can tell you what this looks like in the future. The more confidently somebody tells you that, the less you should believe them, in my <laughs> opinion. Um, but we have to sort of invent these new ways of working, sort of like AI first, AI native ways of working. And that's what's so great about Flow Studio, because unlike a lot of other um, products out there, Flow Studio accelerates work today, and it also allows us to build these workflows of the future that enable potentially people who could never do these things before to, mm -hmm. to create visual effects. OK, so let's talk about the data, because you know this is a very sore point for me, as you know. Yeah. But I think like, and the reason is, is because vendors you know, need data in order to be able to create more compelling software. And then you have customers who actually have the data and you know, don't necessarily want to share the data. And so I just feel like we're a little bit in this standstill, especially in our industry, where you know, we, we seem to not be able to come together. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a problem. And I think the, the nature of the problem is it's a collective action problem. Because actually, not only do we not have the data, I don't think any one of our individual customers has the data. So this really has to be something where the industry comes together. Um, and I think, you know, if I can quote Terminator 2 for a second, I love the quote, <laughs> love the quote, <laughs> was it no fate but what we make, right? And so I think nature abhors a vacuum. Mm. AI is drastically going to change the way we make film and games. And I think the industry can come together collaboratively and figure out how that's going to work with respect for the art and the artists and intellectual property. Or if we don't, then other entities will be very happy to who probably don't respect those things yeah. in the same way. Yeah. And so I, I, this industry is actually very good at coming together when they need to um, and working together. So I'm very hopeful that, yeah. that we can do that. So call me about the data. Uh, all right. So thank you, Matt. I think that's all the time that we have today.